There's a lot of groaning going on. Head keeper David Whitby is back, this time talking wild and park deer management. Fancy saving hundreds of pounds off optics in our latest bargain hunter that's up to 35% off gecko glass. It's all about the angle of the dangle. Sam Green changes technique as he moves around a rabbit target. The weird and wonderful world of general licenses. Is it mission creep? And what will we be allowed to shoot in five years time? How about wild boar? Well, on that subject, in the summer, we made our own running boar shooting gallery. Well, limping boar. We have news, we have hunting YouTube. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. We're back with head keeper David Whitby in Sussex. Last time we met his family and got to see some of his alternative management techniques. In this visit, it's about deer, the wild ones outside the estate and the park animals inside it, where every October they congregate in impressive numbers for the rut. It's a rare sight. We've been lucky enough to film this extraordinary behaviour once before in the state-owned hunting ground of Julia in Hungary. That is a lot of deer. It's one of wildlife's spectacles, isn't it? Just tell us what we've got there. Well, you've got a herd of fallow deer and it's the lek, as you can probably hear the, <laughs> the, the groaning. It wasn't a very good... <laughs> <laughs> um, the growing that's going on behind and, and, and um, our fellow are not unique but one of three uh, parks that, uh, that actually show lek activities and it's the gathering of males in a fairly small area, um, displaying um, and attracting the females. It's female selection, ain't that the world over? They decide um, who's going to mate with them, and um, that's what's going on in the background. You've got bucks that are displaying, that have got their territory, making their noise. And apparently, the, that vocal groaning is, is particularly important uh, in, in attracting the doe. We see it in roughs and reeves, black grouse, some antelope show this lecking behaviour, and three herds of fallow deer in the world. This is one of them. We said this film was about deer, but when you were chatting to David, you learn about all sorts. For example, the reason for the uneven ground here is thanks to grey partridges. These are yellow meadow ant hills, and they were brought in for grey partridge, I don't know, 100 years ago or something like that. And you could dig, um, if you'd got greys reared under bantams in those days or whatever, you could, if you, that, that the ants move their eggs to face the sun. So if the sun's coming from there, you could dig out that section, put it in a bag or something and feed the partridge chicks on the eggs. And naturally they'd feed um, on, on these anyway as they spread around the world. One of our most common insects, the yellow meadow ant now, but these were introduced here, I believe, for grey partridge. You've seen these all over the country and I've always, I've always thought it was ants, but I didn't realise that there was a game connection. Well, you've got to remember, sadly, uh, no longer, but at one time the grey partridge was the king of the game birds in the lowland. And uh, when I was a boy, they were everywhere, absolutely everywhere. The best thing to shoot, the best thing on a plate. Just uh, an amazing little bird that sadly hasn't coped with modern agriculture. Blame the vegans. <laughs> <laughs> More about vegans later. It's swinging, now it's that way, it was that way a second ago. In the meantime, let's join David on a wild deer stalk with his good friend Jimmy. So, young roebucks, young fallow bucks, and muntjac. It's a blustery morning. That can work for you and against you. Deer tend to be a bit more alert when it's really windy, but everything's moving, everything's cracking and crunching. Even the elephant stalkers can... Um, <laughs> get onto, uh, onto a deer in this sort of weather or stand more of a chance because usually when it's very windy it's one directional which helps. This morning it does seem to be changing a little bit but nothing we can do about that. You've got a novice stalker out with you. I've got, uh, I've got a no total novice, absolutely. <laughs> I've just been bashed on the head Absolutely yet. useless, yeah. But you know, we have to work sometimes with what we've got and, and, and that's, if that's what you've got, look, if that's it, 
And goodness help us. Let's go. David takes it slow. He knows this ground like the back of his hand. We spot deer as we go, but the one he wants provides no shot. You know, one of the only two natural species of deer found in Britain, and um, we cherish our row. Do you normally see them gathering like that? Is that, is that I mean, yeah, not is that, known as a herd species? Would that be classed as a herd? They're family groups. They're, group, they're a group species. They don't herd the way that fallow do, um, particularly during the winter, obviously. But you get family groups, and in that group, and I know it fairly well, there, there are two buck kids, a middle-aged buck, uh, that we're leaving because he's quite promising, he looks good. And we've got um, two yearling bucks, and that was, was one of those that we'd like to, you know, that we'd take out. Perfect for the table, um, nice stalking experience for our client. Um, but we've got plenty of row, we'll move, um, move on and find another one. There's one in the green. Oh, there is, yeah, I see it. With good management comes a good quality product, and the estate produces a lot of venison. In the chiller and cutting room, David's colleague Will is butchering a pricket. The market is normally strong. However, 2020 has thrown a spanner in the works, and like many deer managers, he is concerned about supply exceeding demand. As the market shrunk, so the venison price has crashed, and um, we're fortunately finding a, a, a small local market and, and doing what we can. Um, you can't stop shooting the deer. We spoke earlier about a finite area. will only hold so many animals. You've got to continue to shoot, um, and therefore you've got to find a market for what is one of the best meats there is. It's the lowest in calories, cholesterol and fat of any meat, including poultry, fish, anything. And yet it's the highest in protein, or on par with things like bison, buffalo and antelope. So it's a, it's a superfood, recommended to heart patients, and yet at the moment, struggling to sell it. Having blanked on the morning stalk, we head out for the last hour of light. It can only get better. <laughs> Lunch is good. We'll get one here. We've got a lot of deer in this area and we definitely need to take some out. We could do with a young buck again for the table. Uh, we've got three species here. Um, uh, you know, it's uh, windy weather again. It's changing and undulating as it was this morning, but that's okay. We'll, we'll just have to... Um, if he finishes slamming doors and banging gates, we might stand slightly more of a chance, but you have to work with what you've got, really, don't you? <laughs> to try and pull something from the undergrowth, David throws in a few calls. <coughs> it is not our day. Let's hear one last time from David. He feels that it's because gamekeepers truly understand the natural environment, they are the ones willing to make the tough wildlife management decisions that others choose to ignore. So I love deer. You've seen the deer in my garden, you know, but I also see a need to control them. I enjoy the hunt. It's what we did when we crawled out of a pond looking something like an amoeba. We've always hunted. In this world, you're either a hunter or you're hunted. In some cases, of course, you're both. Fact, you can't take that away. It's, you know, whether you eat your meat that comes wrapped in cellophane uh, and you don't recognize it as such, or whether indeed you're a vegan, the crops you're growing are killing far more creatures than ever we do. You know, every field of lettuce is sprayed goodness knows how many times. It can't have a living creature in it. Well, indirectly, if you're a vegan, you're responsible for that. We just happen to stand up and say, look, this is what we believe in. We believe in a balanced countryside and getting that balance right. And this is what we do, and this is how we bring it about. It's just different points of view, but you know, I happen to believe we're right. For more information about the Sealand clothing worn by David and his team, go to gb.sealand.com. Thank you, David. And if you want to see the Lekking Hungarian fallow we mentioned in the film, the link is in the description below. 
Now, according to YouTube, 83.5% of you watching right now are not subscribed to this channel. Unbelievable. If you click the subscribe button and the bell, not only will you get notified when we upload new hunting and shooting films, you will help us out by telling YouTube that hunting and shooting is popular. And while you are bashing buttons, give us a thumbs up too. Who doesn't like a thumbs up? Now from Lex to the Lex Luthor of current affairs, it's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. The English government is holding a firearms consultation with the aim of clamping down on legal gun owners. Home Office Minister for Crime and Policing Kit Malthouse wants to stop firearms falling into the hands of criminals or terrorists and end the misuse of air guns. So he believes that more restrictions are the best way to achieve this. Among the bans he is considering is air guns for under 18s, rifles with muzzle energy of more than 10,000 foot pounds, such as Holland and Holland's 700 Nitro Express, as yet a gun that has not been used in a crime, and licensing for all gallery rifle venues such as pubs with bell target ranges. The government recently banned 50 caliber rifles and introduced licensing for a range of obsolete calibers. You can fill out a government survey to put your side of the argument. There's a link in the description below. Are you planning to go shooting in England on the 2nd of December 2020? First, the government said it was legal. Then it said it was illegal. Now it says it's legal. Members of the English government, including Prime Minister Boris Johnson, announced on the 5th of November that the 2nd of December 2020 is the day England goes from national lockdown, where driven game shooting is banned, back to the tiered system of local lockdowns, where driven game shooting is allowed. Then the written rule that orders the lockdown in England says one minute past midnight on the 3rd of December is the end of lockdown. Now we're back to the 2nd of December, say ministers, though tier three and possibly tier two areas may also see driven shooting stopped. It's legislation that still needs to be voted on by parliament. Uh, the information for Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland is different again. Conservative MPs are accusing the government of bowing down to political pressure from the RSPB. Basque also warns that grouse shooting is under sustained attack after ministers say they back the bird charity's call to ban Muirburn. Tories say any ban is based on the RSPB's hatred of field sports. The RSPB complains heather burning also damages peat, releasing carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. The charity ignores evidence that Muirburn reduces the risk of wildfires, as well as improving moorland habitats for plants and wildlife, including rare birds. Conservative MP Edward Lee says the charity fails to recognise the difference between controlled burning heather and wildfires. The Daily Telegraph quotes Basque's Gareth Doherty as saying the ban or burning argument is flawed and based on cherry-picked research. Animal rights extremists were left dangling after local people hoisted their Land Rover into the air. One sad claimed he was assaulted and those in the car said that their lives were put at risk. Champion shooter James Atwood says drastic action was needed after the Sabs trespassed on his land in Kent while he was out wildfowling. His staff told the Sabs to leave, but they refused, finding another way onto his land and confronting him. James wrote on Facebook that one of the members was very rude and aggressive and tried to provoke him while another tried to kick his dog. As the Sabs left, James says they tried to ram their way out, injuring a member of his staff and damaging an ATV. Fearing for the safety of his staff, he says the Sabs vehicle had to be immobilised. Police in Wiltshire are warning dog owners about dog thieves. They're appealing for help after reports a group of men travelling around the eastern part of the county are trying to steal pet dogs. A post on Facebook mentions a green silver coloured Suzuki 4x4, possibly a Vitara, seen driving around villages in mid-November. The occupants trying to snatch dogs from kennels and gardens. The average price for a puppy has more than doubled from 2019, according to the Pets for Homes website, especially mongrel toy breeds. The average price for a Cavapoo cross cocker spaniel puppy is now £2,867. Do you fancy owning Princess Diana's shotgun? Likely to be Lady Diana Spencer's first gun, it's a good quality Birmingham made 410 and it's up for auction. The man selling it is her brother, Earl Spencer. He is selling three guns in a two-day auction on the 7th and 8th of December 2020. 
Guided at 1,500 to 2,000 pounds, it's a Joseph Curry 410 box lock ejector with two and a half inch chambers built around 1937. The great British Game Week began on Monday. Two campaigns, Taste of Game and the British Game Alliance are holding online events and promoting game special offers across the UK. They're encouraging people to taste game if they haven't done so before and try products including pies, sausages and burgers. Here's another reason to be enjoying some game. Vegan diets more than double the risk of a broken hip. A study at Oxford University finds that giving up meat weakens bones and can cause osteoporosis. Compared with meat and fish eaters, people with lower calcium and protein intake are more prone to hip, leg and spine fractures. Vegans are 43% more likely to suffer fractures. According to the Vegan Society, there are 600,000 vegans in Britain, about the same number of gun license holders. Sales of hunting and fishing licenses are spiking in the US. Fed up with being stuck at home for weeks, many Americans are turning to outdoor sports that offer safety and solitude, according to an Associated Press report. Besides boredom, many are attracted by the thought of a new source of food, with supplies disrupted at times during the pandemic. The trend has reversed a slowdown in the popularity of hunting in America. In some states, applications have increased by up to 30% compared with last year. In Michigan alone, the number getting licenses for the first time in at least five years, or ever, jumped 80% to nearly 84,500 people. Meanwhile, wildlife officers in the US have made a bizarre discovery. A helicopter team out counting bighorn sheep ahead of the hunting season in a remote part of Utah spotted a strange monolith and went down to investigate. The Utah Department of Public Safety Aero Bureau says the piece of metal is about 12 foot high and firmly planted in the ground. They guess the monolith is art inspired by the metal pillar in the film 2001 A Space Odyssey. Police are appealing for information. And finally, Canadian drivers are being warned not to let moose lick their vehicles. Officials in Jasper, Alberta have put up signs asking motorists to avoid letting moose lick road salt off their vehicles. The animals find salt hard to resist. A National Park spokesperson says people should drive away and definitely not get out of their cars, as moose can charge if they feel threatened. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stuck in the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Now, Bargain Hunter, and this week we have teamed up with Ruag UK to secure Field Sports Nation members and Field Sports Channel viewers a very nice 35% discount off a range of Gecko Optics while stocks last for the next seven days. You can save up to £549. All you need to do is click the link, bit.ly slash FSTVweek, and add the coupon code FSTV01, all capitals, at checkout. Thank you, Gecko, for that. And a few firms are offering discounts this week. Nothing exclusive about these, but among them, Zawa and Blazer are knocking up to a third off their prices, and there are links in the description below to that. And if you're into your kit, have a look at our other channel, Field Tester, where you can find lots more films about gear, guns, clothing, helping you to look deeper and choose yourself better Christmas prezies. Now, later in the show, Sam Green is shooting rabbits two ways. First, I'm after a running boar in Somerset. Go on then. You may have seen expensive running boar ranges where the cardboard cutout travels at the wild boar top speed of 25 miles per hour, almost as if it is on rails. It is on rails. Well, my neighbours and I decide that we can beat that, and at a fraction of the cost. So that's a wheelbarrow um, tyre cut in half and then folded down. Hopefully the rope will go around it. It all came together back in the heady days of summer when we were allowed to gather together like this. The washing machine engine belt turns the wheelbarrow wheel which moves the rope which pulls the trolley with the cut out bore on it. So we go round. Oh, Evan, hand on that very well. Right, if you unravel it before he takes my hand off. My friend Fish, former tank commander, is sharpening his office serial skills on getting local sons and daughters to set up a running wild boar. We will come back to that word running later. Right, so this goes round yeah. to the other pulley. There we go, that. Yeah? In a circle. And then we're going to peg it to the ground. No, either end. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So you need the pegs 
Mallet. Right. Now for this outing, Fish is in charge of the design strategy. His son, Fred Fish, is more of a tactician. He built the kit and he is already in trouble. I got the wrong size temp pegs for the problem. I, I blame the subcontractor, purely. Yeah, you know, he had the order, just completely failed on, you know, spec. You know, it's a technical difficulty, but we're going to overcome it by a big hammer. For the target, we were going to use Fish's cutout bore with its wrong way round tusks. Happily, the gun trade rides to the rescue. New German thermal optics manufacturer Liemke has been sending out these bright orange cardboard bores, and we have nicked one for track and trace purposes. There is also the matter of the rope. As you can see, it is not spooling cleanly. I mean, genius doesn't run easily, does it? No, no, it's... it's... I've seen monkeys working out problems, and this is quite... Fish is a hard man to please. After much toing and froing and occasional breaks for other kinds of target practice, we are ready to shoot. Is the ball ready to be shot? Now it's time to fire him up. And that is where we hit our first major design flaw. Yep, the belt on the washing machine engine is slipping. Monkeys, Fish, monkeys. Happily, he has a solution, a winch. Attach the winch to the bore trolley and behold, the world's slowest running bore range. Nothing daunts a British officer. Back to the drawing board, men. That was a great fun day and thank you, Fish. Now let's hand over to a professional. It's Sam Green. So now we've got a rabbit that's actually a flat crossing target. So when we were further around there as a quartering rabbit, we would keep the gun back, the rabbit would come, we'd come up from behind, push through and then shoot. This time we're gonna use a maintain lead Phil will watch the target, decide where he wants to shoot the target, he'll pick his hold point and then stay in front of the target as the lead is required. So if he thinks it needs a foot lead, he'll stay a foot in front of that target all the time, keeping the gun moving at the same speed of that rabbit. So hopefully you're going to decide where you're going to shoot the target, your kill point. Yep. Oh. I'm doing wrong there. Yeah, so bring your hole point back that little bit more, okay, and then just get on with the target. You're actually holding onto that target too long. So your picture, your lead of what you want, just bring that your hole point back that little bit more and let the clay come up, stay in front of it, have the confidence to shoot it in front of you. With that target, the later I leave it, the more it's slowing down as well. Yeah, of course. So, you get in front of it, I suppose. Yeah, the fastest part of a rabbit is when it comes out of the trap. Every time it hits the floor, it's cutting down on speed. The time it's got half of its actual run, it's half the speed. Um, they're very deceiving rabbits of how much lead they want. They never want an actual big gap because they, they're always slowing down. Our minds pick up the speed from the first point we see it but we actually need to be working the speed out where we're actually going to shoot the target instead of where we see it. So, if we watch the target, pull. So, I would shoot the target straight in front of me. Okay, so that's going to be my kill point. And then how far can I go back to stay in front of the target? So, if I bring my gun back to here, pull, I can't stay in front of the target. So I've come back too far, the target's going to beat me, I've got a rush gun, I'm going to end up shooting in front of the target. So that's where I'm going to shoot it. If I go back on a 50% basis, pull, I can now stay in front of the target all the way and maintain that lead and take my time and shoot the target. So that's my kill point. I bring the gun back halfway, stop, pull, I'm staying in front of the target all the time. Pull.
Oh. <laughs> and that was your jumping rabbit. <laughs> Thank you, Sam and Phil. Next up, news editor Ben is looking into the General Licenses crystal ball. What will we be allowed to shoot in the future if the environment munchkins have their way? Again and again, we show gamekeepers struggling to conserve Britain's wild places and wildlife against an immovable civil service. Whether it's waders in Hampshire or hen harriers in the North Country, government officials can't grasp simple facts of nature. I don't understand why uh, the curlew and other red-listed species on the moors have to suffer uh, because of, of their uh, inefficiency and ineptness. The new general licences in England, due to start on the 1st of January 2021, are the latest pile of paperwork to prompt anger from shooters. England's Environment Department, DEFRA, now says we can't shoot jackdaws and rooks to protect songbirds. Government scientists dispute evidence such as this photo that they prey on rare birds, threatening species. We can still shoot jackdaws and rooks to prevent crop damage, but the rules say we have to prove crop damage in the first place and show other prevention doesn't work. Every restriction to the general licenses pushes pest control into the bureaucratic hellhole that is the individual license, such as for corvids on or near European protected areas and in most of the UK, for all gulls. Hey, Natural England, where's the gull problem? Please tell me. Over two years since BBC TV's Chris Packham and his Wild Justice Group forced Natural England to tighten its rules, civil servants have denied licenses to moorland managers who want to protect red and amber-listed birds and to pest controllers clearing gulls from businesses where they are causing damage. Basque says the general licenses are here to solve problems but what started out as a two-page document is now 11 pages and set to get longer in the next few years. There's an important thing here to understand with the general licence. They are, they are there to allow us to control a the problem. They're not there to facilitate us going shooting, although we, we like going shooting, we like carrying out um, you know, all manner of gamekeeping activities. What we should be doing as a country is, is to try and get rid of red tape wherever we can on whatever legislation. So that's one of the things that we will do at Basque is to try and push for shorter licenses, more concise licenses, but also where we need to give members and other people guidance so that they can actually understand what's quite a legal document now. As seen with other government policies in wildlife, anti-sowing confusion appear to be a trend. The Game and Wildlife Conservation Trust thinks some of these problems are solvable. I think we will you know, continue to have issues um, into next year as people get used to the, uh, the new licensing regime. Um, but it, it, for people that need to apply for, new, for an individual license, um, uh, how effective the system will be will largely depend on um, the capacity that DEFRA and Natural England have to process applications. And clearly, there wasn't sufficient capacity this year. What DEFRA are proposing from January is that all those protected sites come back under the general license um, so you don't actually have to apply for one. That's their intention but we still don't know what those conditions will be that those um, people using the licenses need to operate under on those um, protected sites. So We've had some information as to what the licensing system will look like next year, but there's still a lot of detail to come out. Where there is a genuine need for somebody control, to control a, a bird, if we're going to call it a pest bird or, or whatever, um, the, license, the licenses should be fairly applied. You know, your application should go in, it should be assessed. If there's a genuine reason, you should get it, rather than any arbitrary limit or decision by somebody else. Will the trend be adding or taking away species from the list continue? You bet. One thing that DEFRA have committed to do is to review these licences every year. So as um, you know, certain uh, pest species increase in number, then there is the opportunity for you know, DEFRA to review 
um, which species come under general licenses and which species don't. So it, it will be an, an evolving process, I think, over the next few years with um, you know, changes being made perhaps on, on an annual basis. Perhaps the biggest changes will come after Brexit. I'm no expert on Brexit and I think we're none of us exactly know where we're going even at this late stage. But we're signed up to certain requirements such as the Birds Directive, um, which underpins a thing called the Bern Convention, which we as a country will still be signed up to. Um, as we leave the EU, um, uh, the um, wildlife legislation, I think it's inevitable that it will be um, reviewed and you know, potentially changes made, some positive changes and, and some uh, which, which perhaps might not work in our favour in terms of you know, rural land managers. I think it's really important that civil servants listen to people like ourselves who know what's happening in the countryside. That would be nice. However, a glance at the complete list of birds on general licences shows the opposite of joined up government, with only five pest birds shootable across all four parts of the UK. The English government has already added mammals, such as stoats, to its general licences and is thinking of using the licences to allow pheasant releases. Scotland may use individual licences as a way of stopping grouse shooting. It looks like it's all aboard the bureaucracy bus for Britain's bird life. Thanks, Ben. And it's worth pointing out that Ben's news items are not paid for by sponsors. They're paid for by the Field Sports Nation, and we have reached a couple of milestones this week. We have more than 500 shareholders who have bought nearly £90,000 worth of shares over the last three years between them. Thank you to them. We have also broken through the 300 member barrier. Welcome to Geoffrey Smith, Howard Parker, David Bettle, Thomas Fawcett, Cal Stew, Dave Gardner and Saddle Fitting who join us on YouTube and thanks to Richard Titmarsh and Stuart Thompson who join us via the website. Where the link, if you would like to give a membership to a friend or loved one as a Christmas present remains, fchannel slash offer. Now let's head into the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube. It is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Here's a novel idea, as promoted by Dave Carey Shooting. Tweedle is a lottery company where you can win shooting fishing Range Rovers and in this film a day at the legendary Brigands shoot in Wales. Dave explains it all. Alan Brown of Ulster Outdoors and Field Sports is shooting pheasants too. He's on a day in Northern Ireland in November, perfectly legal while much of the rest of the British Isles was locked in lockdown. Good game shooting needs good gamekeeping. The Vermin and Fox Control channel has a hard to get fox which has been picking off his pheasants. He started looking for it in August, he finally gets it in November. Mr Johnson's working terriers is ratting in farm buildings. His bitch, Black, is spoiled for choice. There are hundreds. Great video. Lloyd Pattinson sends me this, admits it's a dull subject, but points out it has had more than 10,000 views in a week, so it must be appealing to some people. How to lubricate your over and under. Dan and Nat from Boring Australia, spelt with an A as in wild boar, make a family trip into the Australian bush where they film their hunting adventures. This is the first video in a new series. Seek One is a US hunting channel that's risen quickly in the last couple of years. It's all about public land hunting and it's all about whitetail, the two things the American TV audience loves best. In this film they are in Tennessee with another big channel, The Hunting Public, and they are giving away a $25,000 boat to their subscribers. We're going to have to raise our game. And finally, more lovely escapism from cold, damp England. Top Air Gun and our old buddy Ted Beers from the Ted's Holdover channel makes this the first of a 12 film series about spearfishing in the Bahamas, which for those who have forgotten is abroad. That's it for this week. I have put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the eye symbol top right or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. And that's it for this week. If you haven't done so, please whiz over to our website fieldsportschannel.tv. Click like us there on Facebook and on Instagram. Follow us on Twitter. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Best of all, Pop your email address into our register page and we'll contact you about this show, Field Sports Britain, at 7 pm UK time every Wednesday. And this has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, and goodbye. <laughs>